so I can see my clay ashtray held together here in the fire. So I'll probably uh, give it a few more minutes. So after several hours in the water here, I can see this isn't turning back into clay. So I'll go ahead and say that I fired this clay successfully. You can see the little pieces of clamshell that got baked into the uh, clay there. So that's brought this project from the ground up. I'm actually excited to try to make a uh, small pot now. So what used to be done before potter's wheels were invented is clay was typically coiled like that to the base, compressed together, and then uh, strips of clay were added, finger pressed into the base, and they kept adding extra strips of uh, clay to build up the pot to the height that they wanted. And then, of course, way beyond my talent level, they'd throw the pots in the air and they'd kind of give them some uh, spin. Centrifugal force would help the symmetry of the pot, shape the pot. But obviously, that's a high skill level to do stuff like that. And obviously, I don't have a lifetime to learn this. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my uh, homemade potter's wheel. But just wanted to show you the the way it was done before potter's wheels or one of the ways it was approached pot making. This is what I have so far of my clay pot. I've been building it in layers of about five eighths of an inch and I did that because the clay really isn't that rigid so as I add more weight up towards the top the uh, the base would start to deform so I just that way I have more control of the shape. I can actually build it a lot taller and I don't have to worry about the clay compressing under its own weight. So I'll just go ahead and kind of build the lip up with some material first before I actually even turn the potter's wheel on. I just find it's easier to add material that way. Then I'll uh, then I'll turn the potter's wheel on and shape it. But otherwise, yeah, it's just really hard to add material when the, when the pot's spinning. So I'm pretty close to the uh, finished form on this pot. I probably got a little ahead of myself. I uh, basically put too much material up near the top here before the uh, stuff lower had a chance to cure and dry. So I had a lot of problems trying to shape it and keep the shape. So I'll probably just let it dry. Maybe touch it up just a little bit before I fire it up. The next task at hand is to collect bark from an oak tree and I'll just use branches that are deadfall from these oak trees in this oak grove and uh, just get a few uh, pounds of it. I use that as a uh, fuel for my uh, kiln to fire my clay pot in. And I'm just going by the uh, literature I read and they were using oak bark so I better stick with it until I know something else works. But didn't have any problem finding a ton of oak bark in this uh, wooded area because it's just pretty much almost straight oak trees. give my pot a little less thermal shock than what I did for my ashtray. I'm going to set it a little closer to the ember bed there for a while. Make sure it's good and dry. Give it a little extra heat. And then I'll uh, throw oak bark onto the ember bed. And then I'll uh, throw pieces inside here and then I'll invert the pot. And then I'll fire it for about an hour on that uh, a bed of oak bark and I'll see how it turns out.
though. So what are you gonna put in it? Um, I'm gonna make clam chowder. Nice. That's awesome. Well, no, if we're that going. Is so awesome. But here's the thing: if it's like a Minnesota, if you're going for like, okay, so you're doing it like with Minnesota clay. You're trying to keep it kind of local. I'd make like a local kind of food.